Hello there, and welcome to Trope on a Rope, the show where we discuss, dissect, contrast, and compare the tropes that have come to define cinema and see which ones are raised up the flagpole for all to salute and which are hoisted by their own petard. We are here at the conclusion of our quest to delve into the quagmire that is pre-Marvel Marvels. Comic book films made before or outside the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Films that didn't break the mold, there was no mold. They were comic book movies before the idea of comic book movies was even in the public consciousness, let alone ruling over all cinema. Now we've punished the Punisher and tripped the light fantastic with the infamous fan stick. Now we go back to the beginning. Because in 2018, Hollywood was collectively circle-jerking itself at the prospect of Black Panther, the first black Marvel hero on film. Well, it turns out 1998 would like to have a word, son. Blade was not only the first black hero, but one of the first superheroes, sold off by a cash-strapped Marvel in the 90s for bus fare and half a sandwich. My name is Jeff, and I'm joined in this quest back in time by Mr. Colin Gerrard. Yeah, right, mate? Pretty fucking good. Eating a curry, baked some cookies, I'm a happy bunny. <laughs> nice. Now, I'd like to just have a recap on last time we talked when we were talking about Fan Four Stick about these films and like having a formula, but the MC movies, the, the MCU movies, sorry, definitely do have like a formula to them. I just wanted to recap that. And it's only four steps introduction slash origin story, the threat. Usually a battle with the main antagonist. The protagonist usually loses. Number three, the coming storm. Brooding about the loss, upgrading, antagonist upgrades too. And finally, the final battle. Another battle between the protagonist and the antagonist, which isn't as impressive or as interesting as their previous fight. But the good guys win. And the good guys win. Usually, and strangely, I've, I've, I was re-watching Endgame. A lot of these battles are quite like old school. It's two large armies in a field. Being very polite about the start of the battle. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> it's always two two large armies that turn up in a field at an agreed time. They have a ruckus, and then they agree that whoever won wins the battle in general. Like, how long has it been since one of those kind of wars actually happened? About for 300 years, I think. <laughs> about three now it's all like drones and remote stuff and like technology or like assassinations and shit and despite the characters in the mcu having all of those toys and more they still decide everything in a field on the same day yeah which uh, makes lots and lots of sense to nobody <laughs> yeah right <laughs> It's very strange, like, oh, and the cavalry are here. It's very, like, old-style action sequences. If you, yeah, if you think about it, it's like, why are they turning up at the end to all have a big fight in a field? Yeah. Like, Endgame, literally, it's in a field. Yeah. Fucking Infinity War, actually, is in a different field. So, <laughs> Black Panther, field. Black Panther, shield, with a massive shield over it. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, not in a field, on the back of a boat in the middle of the sea with, with sea people for which the middle of the sea is a field <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're so honorable you can't be a bastard or even the bad guys though even the bad guys are honorable enough to turn up in the full force in a team sure they're invading but you know they turn up and they waited for the good guys to rally together so there was a nice even fight mm. all right anyway shall we get into blade yes Right, I've got my introduction for Blade. Hang on. Uh, <clears throat> Blade follows the murderous adventures of Eric the Blade Brooks, half vampire, half human hybrid, who spends his nights getting into all sorts of fisticuffs with vampires and his days walking, apparently. Things take a turn when he comes across Stephen Dorff, who enjoys his place at the top of the food chain and says as much, but he wants to turn everyone into a vampire somehow and, for some reason, forgetting how food chains work. Just remember my extra point. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think of this film overall? Like, when was the last time you saw this? Uh, I think the last time I saw this was about 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, same. But like, I knew I knew already that I liked this movie. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it would stand the test of time, mm. and it does. It's a great movie. I mean, there are there are some things about it that piss me off, but generally speaking, very good film. 
it's one of those films that it's ingrained in your mind and you think oh i i can i don't really need to watch it again because i've seen seen it so many times and it's so it's so um famous that i know every part of it and then you rewatch it and you just go oh i forgot half of this <laughs> yeah there's lots of little tiny moments that happen in like right at the very beginning when uh that that the guy is being taken on a date to the underground nightclub that Frost owns. And he walks in and they go through the meat factory. And then just randomly there's a there's a dead human body and when he's like, What the fuck is that? And you're like, Oh, didn't notice that. The- <laughs> yeah. But he still walks in there with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you would have thought that that would be a, a, a big tip off. That something was crook. Seeing two literal dead bodies in body bags, in see through body bags on hooks. Just in the meat in the meat section. In the- <laughs> in a meat process plant be like i would have stopped and gone i've got follow-up questions i would have gone oh my uber's nearly arriving um be with you in one minute run away run away so that's how the film opens well the film has a bit of a a, a, a bit of a flashback uh first it like starts in the in the 1970s where where blade is born 19, 1967 i believe he's half human his mother was bitten whilst pregnant it is true He's born, he's not quite half vampire, half human. He's, he's, I looked it up. I looked it up. It's called, and it's probably not how you, how you pronounce this, Dampier. What's that? That's what he is, apparently, Dampier. It's like vampire without the E on the end, and instead of V, it's D H A M P I R. Dampier. Yeah, right? Yeah, good, good little lilt on that then. Yes. <laughs> right? It's a shame he, it's a shame he gets the, um, the aging still. He gets all of the good points. None of the bad points, except the aging and the bloodlust, which is a bit sad. Yeah. I wouldn't mind the, the bloodlust so much if I was a vampire or stroke dampier or whatever, because, you know, that's my food. Mm. So I'm pretty sure I'd find a way around it, like the, like the other vampires do, the blood bank. Why doesn't he just drink from the blood bank? Yeah. But, yeah, the aging's a bit of a bit of a downer. I did do a little bit of research about this. The original character from the comic books isn't half vampire. Really? Apparently, he's just a dude. He's immune, he's immune to vampire bites, but he is just a dude. Oh. Also, he's British. The original Blade is British from, from the comic books. Did you notice that he, when he meets his mum at the end, she's British? Is she? I didn't notice that. She has, she, she has an English accent. But after this film, they retroactively changed it so that he is now half vampire, half like what he is in the film. Yeah, which kind of is better, right? Yeah, so they ch- they changed it to match the film series, but uh, yeah, the the new Blade, the new Marvel MCU one, the actor whose name I can't remember, he is British, so he's becoming British again. Fucking awesome. Um, anyway, the Blood Rave, nineteen ninety eight. As you said, they take that they they take that bloke to a Blood Rave, which, quite frankly, is a health and safety nightmare. Certainly <laughs> is. Years- like like the thing with the cows, we don't like we don't go we don't fill sprinkler systems with anything that we eat or drink. Milk, like that would be fucking insane. <laughs> and really, really, yeah, that's not going to be healthy afterwards. We don't we don't go to a nineties style nightclub, which for some reason were always in warehouses and meat packing pro- facilities in the nineties. Yeah, for some reason. We don't go to them and dance um, to 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 nineties fucking whatever uh, rave music, and then just cover ourselves in milk, going mm, calcium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can feel I can feel it in my bones. I can feel my bones getting stronger. That's the stuff. Out of all those people, only one of them brought a human. Yeah, I, I did. Not, literally, everyone there is a vampire. Yeah. It was just that one guy. Yeah. And uh, they're really mean to him. <laughs> he walks in and they're just like pushing him around and shit. For no- like- yeah, for fun. Like playing with your food. Yeah, he's your dinner. Be nice. Were they going to Were they gonna like drink him, attack him, eat him, turn him? Or were they just fucking with him? I think they were just fucking with him. I, think, I don't even think that... Well, they probably would have killed him. But I think they would, they would just wanted to torture a human. Because they already had blood coming from the fucking ceiling. It's not like they needed an extra snack. Yeah, exactly. At this point, uh, Blade walks in, and and he kills everyone, which is awesome. It's a good scene. Although I'm not sure why he doesn't kill Quinn, who's the who's the dumbest vampire ever. Yeah, no. 
sets up a shitloads of problems <laughs> problems for the future. Blade kills everyone except for Quinn. He enjoys it a little bit too much. A little bit too much. The thumbnail that I wanted for this, which I couldn't get a good quality one, is the one where he just I'm going where he just does that fist bump. Yeah, I was going to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> he na- he nails Quinn to the wall with a shotgun stake, and then nails his other shoulder with another stake, and then does the fist bump thing. Even though by far and away the first shot was the the more difficult one. The second one, he was pinned to a fucking wall. <laughs> Why is it like, yeah, got him. Yeah, you got him with the first one. That was way more impressive. He was moving. <laughs> what do you think of the um, disintegration effects? Uh, not, still not bad. It hasn't. I think there's a lot of other better CGI now, but still not bad. I think the, I think they're quick enough to not be bothered by it. Yeah, but you, do, you did you notice that most of the disintegration happens just before they either hit the floor or an obstacle, never midair for some reason. Like it's always uh, the dis- disintegration is really well timed with a collision of some sort. Also, like do, the CGI itself leaves like a a, a a pile of dust and a little bit of bones. Yeah, but then later, like when the police turn up at the it's end, gone. nothing. <laughs> Everything is like swept clean. Also, with the disintegration effects, I noticed that it only really happens at the beginning and at the end of the film. In the middle, he just shooting people with normal bullets. I think, even though that they know that that's not doesn't that's does nothing against violent powers. They're just using normal guns because everyone just goes and falls on the ground like normal, and I assume just get up again. I didn't notice that, but you're. Pro- I think you might be right. I think just to save money, save save on the budget. Yeah. Um, also, Blade is his special power. Not getting blood on him. That's another thing I wanted to mention. Because <laughs> it he, he's in a room with walls that is literally spraying blood from the ceiling, and then he's just standing in the. Literally, everyone is red with blood all over him, and he's just standing there going, "So, as a big fight with everyone on a slippy floor." Gotta say, and <laughs> no one's like, eh! and like slightly losing balance and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fantastic if they put that in there though there has to be an edit of this film where you just add squeaks <laughs> oh that's another thing i wanted to point out actually yeah there's one thing that one of the things that annoyed me was the really over the top this the stock <laughs> punch effects yeah they were pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> and then that guy that poor guy that was brought to the club he just left to be arrested by the cops <laughs> In a room by himself with a dude nailed to the floor, a wall on fire. Covered in blood with no bodies, nothing. No other suspects to, to, to suspect. <laughs> in the middle of a fucking, in the middle of a spotlight, like a, right here, there's the guy. <laughs> Just leaves his hat. <laughs> and a guy on fire. <laughs> guy. Fucking hell. <laughs> Poor guy. What happened to him? Yeah, that guy's fucked, isn't he? Uh, so let's jump to the hospital where we see the doctor, uh, uh, the, the main last from the film, his name I can't remember. I can't even remember the name of her character, actually. Neither can I. Let's just call her the doctor. She's the one doctor in a world where vampires exist who has noticed that something is weird in blood. Yeah. The only person in this world who's noticed that something's crook. Um, she also, later in the film, she, she cures vampirism in like one afternoon of trying. Well, she she was on a clock, mate. To be fair, like this thing that ex- ex- existed since the dawn of time, and there is no cure. Oh no, she's cracked it one a- one afternoon. Doesn't just do that. She also invents the best fucking weapon against them ever. What was that? The, that's the blue serum that makes their heads explode. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. In one afternoon, Paul Whistler, he's been wasting his life. <sighs> well, we'll get to Whistler because I've got some notes on him. <laughs> um. Charcoal guy kills male doctor. What does that mean? Oh, yeah. The the burnt guy, Quinn. He turns up at the hospital as fucking a piece of charcoal because Blade didn't kill him for some reason, as you said earlier. And then Blade turns up at the hospital to kill him there, which he also doesn't do. Why, why is he fucking around with this? I don't know. It's like he wanted to... F- That's why I don't get it. Just kill him in the first place. Then that doctor wouldn't... To be fair, though... If he had killed Quinn, he never would have got the cure for vampirism, the new serum for him for himself, or the blow up your 
vampires serum either. So, in hindsight, good choice. Quinn bites the doctor, and Blade's thinking about leaving leaving her behind, but then he then he doesn't. The police turn up, and the police just open fire straight away. Yeah. Well, they are American, but <laughs> it's. <laughs> There's no regard for the fact that he has a hostage who is a doctor right there. He has a hostage who is a doctor right there. They hit nothing. Well, they hit the floor and the wall. Come on, be fair. He lobs her out of a window. Yeah, as you said, the police shoot him and his hostage. And then they just fire wildly out the window. Yeah, nothing. Like, you're not shooting Blade because you're hitting everything but... But there's like a fucking wall of city around you, and you're just shooting wildly out the window like mentals. Was that was that an apartment block on the other side? Well, yeah, where Blade Lob throws the the girl and then jumps across to. Was that an apartment block? Yeah, so then people lived there. Some some people just died of random wildfire. <laughs> and the building behind, you're just firing out the window like an insane person. Uh, so the doctor gets bitten, but she doesn't turn because of reasons. Yep, don't know what they are, but she just doesn't. But apparently, they 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 they, ca- they catch it fast enough. They being Blade and Chris Christopherson. Chris Christopherson, who plays what did, you said his name. You said his name earlier. Whistler. Whistler. Thank you. He plays Whistler. He injects garlic into a bloodstream, which to counteract the vampirism. But I'm pretty sure that the essence of garlic that that would just kill anyone. Yeah, he did mention it would hurt a lot. I'm pretty sure if you just inject essence of garlic into anyone, it would kill them. (laughs) Especially that much. It was quite a lot. It was quite a lot. Yeah. A lot of these scenes with Chris Christopherson is basically Vampire 101. Yeah, there's got to be someone who there to explain. It's like like Doc Brown in Back to the Future. Yeah, and they have to explain the rules of this universe, which is which, of course, has to have a reference to the fact that the stories you've heard before ain't worth shit. Yeah. So this doesn't work. This doesn't work. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a story. These things are real, man. This is the real world. So what's it like? Holy water and crosses don't do shit. That's what they say. Yeah. But um, steaks, silver, that kind of thing. Garlic. It's a very se- it's a very secular um, vampire movie. <laughs> now that you've said that, I think that that's been mentioned somewhere. Be- I think I half remembering this that they said because if it's the real world. That the reason why that that crosses and I think you're right. The reason that crosses and like holy water don't work is because people from other religions can be bit and turned as well. Yeah. So you could you could like get a Jewish or a Muslim vampire. So why would holy water work against them? I think that's in the comic books from the comic books rather than 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 the movie. Um, they talk about what blade is, what the serum is, because he has to take. He has to take something to not turn into a vampire and go mental bloodlust. But it's running out. It's not working anymore. He's he's like building an immunity. But um like they never really explain exactly what it is, but I'm guessing it's some kind of blood substitute or something. I don't know. Uh they explain who the bad guy is, who is Stephen Dorf. And they say that they've been tracking him, or we've been tracking his movements from here, there, and everywhere. But he lives in a massive penthouse he's not hiding just go around his house has lots of nightclubs massive parties at his penthouse yeah how did they not find him yeah like he was in that he was in the blood rave yeah he, yeah you see him in the very first like scenes oh then there's one character I, one vampire i felt very sorry for pearl didn't really do anything didn't kill anyone just a fat fucker sitting there and then they just burnt they taught they literally torture him and he, his voice, that really high pitched squeal of like a baby being burnt to death. I was like, oh, poor Pearl. Yeah. Stephen Dorff. Stephen Dorff says his plan is that he's using a computer to translate the vampire Bible. Yeah. Which the vampire council says can't be done. But again, he does it in, an, in like an afternoon. <laughs> he does it very easily. And they go to the blade and the doctor go to the server room and they find Pearl, who's this big. Big, large vampire, yeah. and they, yeah, they talk, torture him for a bit. Pro- proper, get into it. They proper enjoy it a little too much. You've just brought something else up, which is quite interesting that I hadn't thought about before. What? Yes, uh, Frost does translate that extremely easily. Yeah, but he has to use a computer program. Yeah, whereas Blade only needs a fragment of the parchment paper and give it to Whistler, who instantly goes something about the. Uh... Yeah, he just reads it. 
<laughs> he can just do it straight away. Yeah. Something about the uh, the twelve spirits of the uh, vampires and the god of blood. Right. Well, Frost should have gone to him first. Uh, we're we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit now, but uh, so there's a vampire council. The vampire council is like the old stuffy dudes. They have a treaty with the humans not to fuck around too much or cause too much too much bother. But Stephen Dorff is he's a bit of a twat. Bring him in to tell him off for the blood rave thing. He waxes lyrical about them being the old generation, and then they just let him fuck off. Yeah, no punishment. No punishment. The, throughout the film, they're just pussies. Like when they find he's like translating the Bible thing, they just go, "You can't do it," and he says, "Yeah, but I'm gonna." And Udo Kier, who just goes, "All right." All right then, yeah. Bye. <laughs> What's the other thing? Like a uh, frost, frost insults him to his face, and then his uh, his reply is, "You bore me." Yeah, exactly. He just goes, <laughs> "Yeah." They do no, they do nothing. Like he's in the library that they say he can't go into. Uh, they go, "Yeah, okay, whatever." He kills the head dude, uh, Udo Kier, and they go, "Okay, yeah, whatever." They drag them. He drags all of them down to the temple. They go, "Yeah, okay, whatever." Please stand in the middle of this ancient death machine. And they're like, yeah, yeah okay. Huh. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. It sounds fun. Go along with everything. They're just such dicks. Um, also, where did they... Like, they haven't translated this thing, right? This paper until just recently. Who the fuck built the temple? And if they and if they did build it, then why? Why did they build it? If they hadn't translated what it's for yet. And how would they know how to build it if they don't know what it's for? They, do they just have this, like, big room that they've... Built? What's in this room? I don't know. We've just been using it for storage. So, uh, after patching up the Doctor, Blade and Chris Christopherson tell the Doctor to go fuck herself, and she goes back to the normal world. But they tell her, very conveniently, oh, by the way, they're vampires and um, familiars everywhere. And she's like, okay, cheers. Um, you going to help? Nope. Bye. No, fuck off. <laughs> she goes back to her apartment, and then a police officer, who is a familiar, turns up and tries to fuck with her, and then Blade just beats the shit out of him. Yep. He does the same thing with the cri- with the crispy vampire for some reason. Sets it free, tracks it down. Why? Yeah, they're not very good at this, are they? <laughs> um, they play, this is very like nineties because they take that police officer out into the street and then just beat the shit out of him in the middle of the street. Yeah, and no one says shit. <laughs> no one says shit. And I'm like, yeah, that's the, that's New York in the nineties. Lucky no other policemen, like policemen, came past. And he pulls a gun on the guy. Fucking hell. How are you not under arrest? So, yeah, uh, after the translation of the thing, they have a fight in the Bible room. Um, is that their only copy of that? I think so. Apart from the backup, the computer backup. Apart from the computer backup, because they have just a gunfight just in that room. <laughs> <laughs> And Blade, as you said earlier, Blade rips off a random piece of parchment, not knowing what it says, and it happens to say the important bit, which Whistler can read somehow. Now, that is lucky as fuck. How did he get the wrong bit? There was a lot of pieces of paper in that room. Right. I mean, <clears throat> the Daywalkers. The Daywalkers. Would sunscreen work? If it wouldn't work, or if it would work, then why has no one done it before? Yeah. Because the sunblock thing kind of annoyed the crap out of me. Mm. And also, you know they kill the, the head of the vampire dra- dragon Dragonetti, whatever his name was. Yeah. And they put him in the sunlight. And they're all wearing sunblock. Yeah. And then they put bicycle uh, helmets over as well. M- motorcycle helmets. <laughs> Thank you, not bicycle helmets. Because <laughs> <laughs> that just... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> good point well made I mean I suppose technically you, uh, I suppose sunblock would work you could wrap yourself in tinfoil if you wanted to that would work too well you could do like um, the invisible man couldn't you what do you mean like, just like bandages and glasses yeah you could do that so I mean I suppose sunblock it, it is sunblock so but sunblock does it work on their eyes no probably not <laughs> does it does it work on their hair their head Probably not. No. Well, maybe, maybe that maybe the hair they could like streak it through. The minute that they open their mouth, would they not inside of their mouth just tur- burst into flames? Oh, they drank it. Yeah, the sunblock thing annoyed me as well. I, I can I can see that if they were like goggles, 
and a face mask, then maybe it would work. But no. Nah. The the bit after this uh, this scene with the where they kill where they kill the head of the vampire council um, using sunscreen and uh, motorcycle helmets. There's a scene which I've called two adult men holding a child by the face. <laughs> Why would you call it that, Jeff? So Blade's just walking down the street. This whole scene feels like it was filmed later. Like someone said, "Oh, this this I think this doesn't make sense. Can you make a scene where they just have a chat in a, in a park about what they're going to do?" So he's just walking down the street, and then there's like a whisper, "Blade." I'm like, "Is that a power?" <laughs> so I thought that same thing. So yeah, they just hold this. Uh, Stephen Dorff is just holding a child off the ground by the face in the middle of a park in the middle of broad daylight. And Blaze just having a chat. It looks like human trafficking in the middle of a park. Again, 90s New York. Who knows what's going on there? But no one goes, hang on. They don't They don't really say anything. No, they just kind of reiterate everything we already knew. Except now that Blade knows and Frost knows everything as well. Yeah. Like Frost says, he does that stupid, what if you join us? No. Okay, then. Bye. Yeah. I'm going to throw this child through a bus. At a bus. At a bus. Through a bus stop. Through a bus stop in front of a bus and the bus driver, like, it's very obvious that she's in the middle of the road and the bus driver does not stop. Or slow down. Or slow down. New York. New York. What can you say? <laughs> Chris Christopherson, back at the base. Chris Christopherson and the doctor are working on the cure of vampirism and the bad guys find their lair, which, to be honest, is a large open warehouse. Yeah. By the train tracks. They're not very well hidden. If anything, I will say this, though. They are better at searching for things than uh, Whistler and Blade. Yeah. They do just walk into their base. No no security. No security. Locked door. Who knows? No security. Lots of things. No, not even like one point of entrance and exit. It's just, it's just like an open warehouse with a bunch of shelves in it. Easy to creep around and multiple levels and all that kind of shit. And yeah, they, they deserve what they got. Pretty much, yeah. Chris Christopherson, he, di- he dies. He's in that chair. He's been bitten, bitten to fuck. And um, he asks Blade to kill him before he turns. And he's got a tape. There's look, there's a tape that says, play me, on the side table. And um, Blade pushes it aside. And then he gives Chris Christopherson the gun. And then Blade walks away so that Chris Christopherson can kill himself. And it bang, and he's still walking away. But he has to go back to watch the tape. Did, did, did that one through? Bollocks. I'm still going to have to see his mangled face. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Didn't think that one. Could. Um, right, we're actually at the finale. Yeah, the finale. I will say one thing. Um, bit of a bit of some CGI problems there, but I think that's just because it was 1998. I think back in the day, it was pretty good. Maybe. Are you Are you talking about specifically his blood god powers? Yep, it's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, well, we'll get to that in a sec. <laughs> the finale, for a start, it goes on for about half an hour. Yeah. All this stuff at the temple at the end. It's very, very long. Um, the weird mum stuff. Yeah, she was very, uh, uh, what's the word? A bit too uh, sexual with, uh, with her son sometimes. But she is a vampire. So it turns out that Blade's mum from the beginning, who he remembers by face, even though he's baby at the time like it has a brief flashback to him her giving birth that's not how that works it turns out she's alive she's a vampire and Stephen dorf has been doing her all this time she lives in a sarcophagus for some reason um and she's gone blood and possibly dick crazy yeah i think so in fact if you know if you notice the, f- the first time you see her when she comes out of her sarcophagus she's just lying it's like got a lid and it, it lifts up and inside is her lying down perfectly white dress and just a big pool of blood that she's just been lying in that's fucked did you notice that i did not notice that i need to watch that again yeah it's pretty fucked up all right fucking hell. um so steven dorf is fucking his mum. um we also which is um, incredible that's a bad guy that's a <laughs> that's a baller move for a bad guy fucked your mum, dude um also, uh, his name's Eric. Yep. And he, Blade gets put into this convoluted device where it's uh, like a, a, a 
sarcophagusy thing again and it's like draining him of his blood and his blood falls into the temple below and then he gets pulled out of it by the doctor and because he's weak because of the blood loss he drinks her blood in a very sexual scene yeah which almost looked like he was doing it while he was doing it while she, while he was suck, sucking the blood um she somehow survives this because five minutes later she's just walking around like nothing happened yeah not only does she survive she's fighting people yeah she yeah she is fighting people a fair play to her. Good job. Stephen Dorff's plan, though, is to make everyone a vampire. That's what this temple does. Yeah, which doesn't happen. Yeah, which doesn't happen, right? Yeah. It turns him into a blood god. Yeah. Because the animation that they show in, like, the... the yeah, it shows, like, this this like, this energy ribbon going out. And he says specifically, oh, it's going to turn everyone into a vampire. Which he... He, as I said in the intro, he talks about the fact that he's oh we're top of the food chain. But you're destroying the food chain. Yeah. Why? Yeah. What the fuck are you gonna eat? You'll have some blood bank left over for a while, but other than that, you're fucked. You've just doomed yourselves to starvation, moron. Yeah. Your plan doesn't make sense. This plan, that plan as well, is basically X Men One. That's the plan from X Men. Turn everyone into a mutant. But I mean that, but. Yeah, but that would have made more sense because then everyone... It's not like uh, mutants eat humans, so that would have made sense. Yeah, exactly. But that isn't what the machine does. It just turns Stephen Dorff into the blood god with the powers of dodgy CGI. And super speed once. Again, it's one of these things. It's happened in... It happened in um, Fantastic uh, Fan Four Stick as well. You get these amazing powers, but I think he forgets it quick. He forgets what his powers are quicker than they do in Fantastic Four. <laughs> because they start the fight, they seem really, really even, cling, 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 cling with the swords, and then he cuts his arm off and cuts him in half. Then bad CGI pulls him back together, and then he's just like, "My turn!" And then he's really fast and really strong for about one second, and then he starts losing the fight again. You know, I made fun in uh, of Doctor Doom in Fantastic Four because he's a bad guy from start to end for about fifteen minutes. Yeah, in almost real time. Stephen Dorff, as a blood god, he he survives as the blood god for about four minutes. Yeah, if that. He lasted longer as a normal vampire <laughs> than he does as a blood god, and he didn't turn everyone into vampires, so his plan fucked up anyway. Yeah. Apart from super speed and like the ability to get cut in half um and then re reattach himself or like regrow limbs. Um his vampire god I've written this note, his vampire god powers give him the ability to punch and sword fight like a regular man. Just like blade. <laughs> now I have the equal of you. That's good because that's what they do. They just have a punch, punch up in a fight. Like, yeah, he's a little bit faster, but he he just has the powers of a normal guy. Yeah, and red eyes. He kills Stephen Dorff with um with the 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 blue serum to the head, um and then and then I don't know credits. I assume at that point. Um, uh, yeah, I actually I, as soon as he blew up, I turned. I didn't watch the rest, so I don't know if anything significant happens afterwards. I assume not. I can't remember. I, c I can't remember. I think everyone goes their separate ways. And I assume, I did watch it, but it was a couple of weeks ago now. I assume like a shot of the sun rising or something at the end? Probably. That sounds like vampire filmish. By the way, if, Bl if Blade bites someone, does he turn them into a vampire? I don't know if it works for him as well. Because I, I know she can cure herself, but that must have been a risk when he drained her. So overall, how did you find this film? I fucking love this film. It's brilliant. It is great. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like I say, there are a lot of things about it that are like, what the fuck? But at the same time, fucking great film. I'd say the, the most of the CGI stands up. Stands up. Um, it's very 90s in, in, in the Blood Rave. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like, very Matrix-y things about this film. Yeah, I noticed that as well. But it was made before The Matrix. Yeah. Like, not as, as far enough before The Matrix that The Matrix could copy it. They were probably in production at the same time. It's like Great Minds. Well, that, even, that, even that sunblock scene uh, where he throws the Chinese girl through the bus stop, shoots him, and then the three bullets go slowly, and he's like... Yes. Yes, it's got bullet time. Yeah. Um, I've forgotten about that. Yes, it does have bullet time in it. 
and yeah, everyone's wearing leather and there's dance nightclub scenes and and um yeah, the world is generally shitty and it's mostly set at night or when it's raining or something. Does it rain? I can't remember. It rains blood at some point. <laughs> But yeah, no, it was only made a year before the Matrix, so it's that's not long enough for the Matrix to have, have copied it or anything. It's just you know, great minds think alike. Yeah, no, I I I really like this film. This film's great. Yeah, I mean, the, there's only there's only really two standout things that that are annoying about it. It's the sunblock scene, which I don't even see the point of. That should have just been cut from the movie, really. And uh, yeah, just the CGI at the end was a bit shit. But just just the final scene was a bit rubbish. <laughs> But otherwise, brilliant movie. Love it. Before we give it a, a, give it a score and um, talk about like how it fits in with the um, the, the the trope and um, the thoughts for the MCU in the future, because the MCU are doing a blade and it's a little bit troublesome at the moment. It's not gone very smoothly for them. But I have a serious question before we get into that. Okay, is Blade the bad guy? No. Why why would Blade be the bad guy? I've got my reasons. Okay. Yeah. Vampires feed on humans, right? Yeah. But that's that does not mean that they're inherently evil. Biology, right? Yeah. You, like you can't like if if a shark um, attacks a human, you're not angry at the shark. A little bit angry at the shark. Yeah, but it's you don't people don't go let's kill all the sharks. Actually, people do go let's kill all the sharks. <laughs> that's a bad example. But if a if a if a bear if a bear mauls someone. We don't go. We go. Well, you shouldn't have been hanging around with fucking bears. Yeah, I mean, I'm still a little bit angry at the bear, but I don't blame the bear. Yeah, exactly. It's it, it's their nature, so you can't really blame vampires as as a race. Also, yes, yeah, Stephen Dorff is the bad guy. Yeah, definitely. But the rest of the rest of vampire society seems to want to work alongside humans. Hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe go through, like, blood banks and not piss off humans too much. Like, they say they have a treaty with the humans and they want to want to maintain it, right? Because I assume there's way more humans than there are vampires. Yeah, because they haven't been... They've been trying not to pl- pl- proliferate. Wish I hadn't tried to say that word. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, this is the I am legend problem. Mm-hmm. Do you remember Do you remember what I am legend was about? I, I do, I... Well, yeah, te- like vampire zombies. So the 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 original book of I Am Legend was he lives in a world where the where the um, vampires have taken over or vampire like creatures have taken over, and he's trying to find a cure for it by experiment, hunting them down and experimenting on them. Then in the end, he realizes that actually he's the bad guy because he's been going around killing everyone and experimenting on them when they are sentient beings and they've got their own society and he is a legend to them because he is the, their bad guy. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I remember that. But the the difference is that you say that the uh, the 12 members of the council are good. They have a treaty with the humans and don't particularly want to fuck with them, right? So I would agree with you on that part. Their nature, they're not evil. The thing is that the saliva that they pass on that turns people into turned vampires is more like a disease and like diseases also aren't inherently evil, but they do need to be destroyed, especially if one of them's trying to turn everyone in the world into a diseased person. Very possibly. What about how Chris Christopherson specifically and Blade are working, right? Chris Christopherson says that he does what he does because vampires broke into his house and killed his families and killed his family, right? Yeah. Yeah, but humans could have done that just as easily. Yeah. That happens all the time. Have you never seen um, Criminal Minds? Like, fucked up shit happens all the time, like home invasions and murders. Like, if that had, if someone, someone of a specific race or ethnic, ethnicity came into your house and attacked and killed all your family, and then your response was, I've got to wipe out everyone from that race, that's fucked. That is a good point. Like, in The Punisher, for example, the Italian mob kills his family. Yes. The Punisher's response isn't, I'm going to kill all Italians. Or all Italian mob. Actually, no, he does, kind of. He goes after the people who did it to him and, like, their associates, but he doesn't go, right, I'm going to get all Italians now. True. Because that would be fucked. So, I, I do see your point. 
Also, he says he says that he found Blade when he was seventeen in the street, and he was already eating people. He had the he had the blood uh, bloodlust, and then turned him to the cause, uh, his cause. So essentially, you took a miner off the street and brainwashed him to kill for you, as you have a broken leg. <laughs> And remember how many times throughout this this podcast we've mentioned the fact that when they go around killing people, they're enjoying it way too much. Yeah, there is that as well. But I will say this. I, I don't think Blood Blade's necessarily the bad guy. Chris Christopherson's the bad guy. Yes. Whistler's the bad guy. So I have turned you on that point then. <laughs> yeah, Whistler's, Whistler's a dick. But like you say, B- Blade's brainwashed. You can't blame him. He's... One, they enjoy killing and torture way too much. They're way too into it for it to be them considered the good guys. All right, I'll meet, I'll meet you seventy-five uh, percent of the way. All right, thank you. So, how have you found these these three then? Um, the the Punisher, Van Forstick, and Blade. Nearly forgot the name of the film that we're doing right now. Um, I'm very glad we we watched it in the order we did because uh, it's always nice to finish on a high note. Um, but when it compares to the MCU, you're right. There's no, it doesn't really seem to be any obvious formula they're following. Just like a, the fact that the, the fact that there are sequels to Blade, Blade Two and Blade Trinity, it's not like the, it doesn't seem like they planned to have them and they were trying to set up a certain like formula for their movies. It just seems like a stand standalone movie that was really. That's probably why it's so good. They they seem to follow the um the format of like traditional action films. Yeah, a little bit more freer uh, um in in their execution because I think the MCU films they've become very very formulaic. I mean, like people complain about the MCU or get tired of the MCU, and I get tired of the MCU. Will I watch every single one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> um, but I I know that there's like a such a rigid formula to them like there is those four steps start bit of a fight spend the rest of the film wondering about the fight and then have the final fight at the end and usually the final fight is not as good as the first fight that's that's how predictable they've become actually i was really happy about blades uh blades it, you know as you say the if they were if they were following that formula there's the origin story they kind of didn't skip it they gave the origin story but it was about five seconds long that's all you needed. Enough said. All right. At what score would you give the Blade 1998 then? Oh, I'm, I'm thinking around eight, but possibly eight and a half. Possibly nine. Eight. Eight. What that are we doing? Be... Out of ten? Yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go s- seven and a half. Fair enough. Seven and a half. Yeah. Seven and a half. You're going eight, eight or a half. Uh, well, eight and a half. I'd, say, I'd say eight. Eight, eight and a half. All right, okay, dokes. Um, right, so that's 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 Blade, and that's uh, pre Marvel Marvels. Colin, where can people find you if they want to find you? If you want them and want to be found, Colin ninety two on Instagram, where you can see me make shitloads of cookies. Nice, uh, and you can find me on YouTube at the Badger's Apprentice, where you can also find this podcast, uh, and uh, on Twitter at tba underscore tweets. We'll see you next time. Bye. Peace out.